Well, hello my friends, it's Sean Petit. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so glad that you are here. So today, um, I had a lot of people ask about this piece. I kind of showed it off a couple videos ago. Um, I'm gonna make something similar to this. I talked my way through this uh, uh, two videos ago and I'll have that linked. Um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna make the, they're basically the same thing, but just slightly different, some different lettering and that kind of thing. Um, but I'm also going to just share some um, tips on glazing. So I've got my piece here, and all I've done is put down um, back the, the fall words uh, uh, sheet and then the other fall words sheet there. Let's see. They look like this. There's fall words and Christmas words and then one, and this is all definitions of harvest or fall or something like that. That's available in the resource library. I know tons of you have gotten it already. Um, and I'll have a link to the resource library and a link to sign up if you're not already a subscriber down below in the YouTube description box. Also in the YouTube description box will be um, either a list of supplies or a link to the blog for supplies. Most likely a list of supplies that I use today. So I just wanted to do a, jump in and do a quick video on this truck piece and how I can how you can kind of use the truck in a couple of different ways. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about glazing because that's another question that I get all the time, all the time. Um, so I, I um, either do a wash or a glaze and people always ask, what's the difference? So I'm gonna show you the difference between a wash and a glaze. So I'm going to set this aside for a second. And I've just, I printed out those words and what I've done is I've put a coat of matte medium down. Now that coat of matte medium is the difference maker in so many different ways. Um, if you try the techniques that I'm showing you now on a uh, porous surface, and that is, a porous surface is just something that's going to soak in the water, wood, paper, fiber, anything like that. So I make it non-porous and it, I'm always creating on a non-porous surface. So this has got my papers down and it's got matte medium over the top of it. So this is always a non, I'm always creating on a non-porous surface. So that makes a huge difference in how things work if you decide to do this on a non-porous surface. Okay, so I've got two sheets here and I just wanna show you the difference between a wash and a glaze. And so I'm gonna do a glaze first and I've got some uh, burnt umber out here maybe this is what happens when you don't close your lids properly none of my lids are closed it's just how it goes oh there we go okay so a glaze how I do a glaze and this is Americana uh, Americana's glazing medium it's by DecoArt there's a lot of different glazes out there um, there's Goldens there's Liquitex I honestly prefer this one. It is the cheapest one. It is easy to find um, and it works great. So I pour my glaze and my paint separately. A lot of people will pour it right into the paint. However, what I find is that I can't, when I do that, I can't adjust my shade when I do that. So I'm gonna pull my paint over and then I'm gonna pull my glaze over and I'm gonna mix in the middle. So when I pull it over, I'm like, ooh, that's really dark. I don't want it that dark. I can pull more glaze in. If it's really light, I can pull more paint in. That way you have a little bit more control of how your glaze will look. Now what a glaze does is this extends your paint. It makes it more translucent. Um, it gives you more working time and it gives you a real smooth finish um, and it allows it to get into a lot of the crevices and cracks and different things like that. So on this sheet I've got my brush filled with my paint and my glaze and I've got a rag handy and I'm going to just smooth this across here and with that glaze it gives me a lot of time to really move this out. It gives me a lot of time to pick up 
when I'm doing a glaze, I want to make sure to change my rag to a clean portion. Otherwise, you just end up moving it around. And now I can kind of pick that up even more. And you can see that it gives you a nice, subtle, antique feel. So let me add a little bit more glaze here to my paint. And then I can come back over it and kind of adjust that if I need to. And darken it up and that kind of thing. Really kind of smooth it out. But it gives you nice, smooth um, lines, nice, even coverage. Um, that's what a glaze does. It's nice and even. It flows really well. It'll it'll get into all of the cracks and crevices if you have lots of texture and that kind of thing. So then a wash is, let me rinse my brush out here, and I'm going to come to this side over here. This doesn't have any glaze in it. And I'm going to grab a clean here and a wash is okay so I'm gonna pull this paint out here and a wash I'm dipping my brush into my water and I'm just gonna water that down get it nice and juicy and a wash is like a watercolor almost it's gonna dry faster you can see how it's not as smooth it gives you bubbles it gives you marks it gives you different things that the glaze doesn't do um, you have to work a little bit faster and when I pull it up it's lighter it looks different it's gonna leave some marks but it also has these little kind of uh, watercolor ring effects you can kind of pull that up a little bit tap it with your rag if you want but just that same you can see the difference this is very uh, marbly this is very smooth um, this looks to me more rustic and this is a little bit finer. So a wash and a glaze are very different and yet somewhat the same. So I can still come back in and darken it up. But, I, but building the layers on a wash is a little bit harder than on a glaze. So if I want to build up more layers, I need to really kind of get this heat set. And then come back in. And just start building that up. And it, it takes a little bit more time. And I can kind of pat that. I can move it around. I can do the same thing with the glaze. But what I like about a wash is that it looks kind of tea dyed. It looks aged. It looks like, you know, something you might see on the inside of an old book cover that's kind of worn and stained and seen lots of, lots of history. So there are different times that I use, uh, use either a glaze or a wash. It just depends on the project. And so you can see how I can get kind of this real marbled, kind of watery, uh, stained, stained look. And this is a little bit finer and smoother um, effect. So that is the difference, the snapshot version of a glaze and a wash. So I'll come back to my original piece here. And I'm going to do a wash on here because I like the look, because I like that kind of tea stained, watery effect. I'm using burnt umber instead of raw umber or Van Dyke brown like I typically like because um, burnt umber is warmer. It has a yellower undertone and that's really kind of what I want for this fall feel. So come back in with my rag. Try to find a clean spot and just kind of wipe that up a little bit. And then I'm going to do a couple layers on here to just kind of um, add some interest and some character. So you can see how this really has a real kind of warm feel to it. 
really yellow undertone. So I want to dry this and then I want to come back and put on another layer. Okay, so I am going to just kind of build up and I'm naturally going to try and make the edges darker because that to me is worn. That's where people would handle things where you might naturally see some aging. And of course, this is a fun piece, so it's not too realistic. And I'm just going to pat that so I get some real regular um, uh, marbling in the piece. I'm going to just kind of come in and in random spots so that it's not all nice and that's the purpose of a wash is so that it's not nice and even like a glaze. So I'm going to do a little bit more here. Put a little bit more paint out on my palette. Add a little bit more water. And you can leave it real splotchy or pick it up. I'm going to leave it real splotchy because I want it to kind of look tea stained, coffee stained, that kind of thing. And then if it gets too dark, we can always come back and lighten it up. But super simple, uh, fun background with a wash. So I'm going to get this dry and then we'll move on. Okay, so for I'm going to lay down a base of leaves down here for kind of some ground cover, kind of resemblance of ground cover. I'm using three colors. I'm using Lucas's paints. Um, these are the liquid, and these are this is the krill. Um, liquid is just like a fluid acrylic, basically. It's a little bit thicker, but this is um, yellow ochre, English red deep, and olive green. And I'll grab my makeup sponge and I will mix these colors um, throughout my leaves to get some variation and um, start with a little bit of yellow add in a little bit of that red or orangish color and then a tiny bit of green and you can see the variation that happens with that so I'm just going to turn my leaves back and forth all the way across to get some variety and interest and um, stencil that all out basically in the same pattern Alright, so I've got some gesso out here and I'm just going to stencil my truck in with gesso. Now with this original piece, what I did was I stenciled onto a piece of paper that was plaid and then cut it out. We're going to do this a little bit differently this time. And I love using gesso as my base because then it gives me my guideline and I can come back in and really create it how I want it. Alright, so I've got my design in stenciled out with my gesso. I've got grabbed some teal paint here by Lucas and I'm using a, a fairly small brush. This is a Simply Simmons brush and now I'm just going to fill in the lines. Now there are lines here that has to kind of be there because of the stencil to hold it together. You can follow those lines or you can just use the outer lines as your guideline and that is what I am going to do. I'm going to leave some of the lines.
say okay so here's my truck I've just filled in all the parts all the parts um, and I don't want you to worry about it being perfect or even that's the purpose of filling it in so that it feels painted and not so stenciled so now I want to add some pumpkins to the back here so I'm just gonna lay a paper towel right on the edge of that pumpkin uh, right on the edge of that truck uh, bed and I might want to grab the right pumpkins too that might help Okay. So I've got a tall one and a round one and I'm going to do the tall one first. Actually, I want to make sure I know where the end of my truck bed is so that I have them placed right. So like right there. So let's do this one first partly sticking out. I'm going to use my orange that I used for my leaves and just fill in the whole thing just like that and this is all going to come together I promise so now I'm going to do this one because I'm going to have the white the small one in more more of the front so I want to make it different heights so let's make this one a little taller I'm going to go more yellow and orange, kind of mix that up a little bit, just to add variety so that they're not all the same. Okay, and I want to just quickly... just want to set those so that when I do this next one it won't be I won't smear anything so I am going to grab some titanium white and my makeup sponge that had some gesso on it okay I've got my um, generals charcoal pencil that's extra soft and we're go I'm going to outline everything, including the leaves. And what this is going to do for me is give me an idea of... And I'm going to add my lines that I left out here. And lighter is always better, always better when you're shading. So I'm going to go around every, every single thing. And then when I go around it, I take my finger and lightly smooth it out. And then I can come back in in certain spots and add some darker if I want. You will need to clean your finger as you go because your charcoal builds up on your finger and it starts making your lines too heavy. Okay, so I've shaded all around this cutie patootie, and now we want to add, we want to come back in and add some interest. It looks great, but it needs some highlights, it needs some low lights, it needs um, just some touches. Uh, so when I think about maybe where some wear would be, or where some highlights might be, we can come in here and do that. I'm going to grab a different brush and come in and, and I'm using <clears throat> Titan Buff. This is Titan Buff. All I used on this was teal, Titan Buff, carbon black. I mixed the gesso and the black to make the gray. And the, those are the three colors that I used for the leaves. But I want to come in here and just add that extra special touch of 
of um, just interest so that it looks really painted and painterly. So I can come in here and grab some umber and add some character that way. I can come back in and add, get, grab some umber and paint in my stem. I might grab a little bit of black and umber mixed together to make those stand out a little bit more. But all those tiny little bits of things really um, add to your pieces. And so like the window needs a little bit of highlight, maybe just so that it looks like there might be some glass there. Just a few streaks like that. Maybe just a tiny bit of light on the tires. Like that. That looks great. Now <clears throat> we can add some, we can add the handle. However that might look. And I'm going to paint it and then pick it up with my finger so that it doesn't look like, hello, brand new uh, handle. And then we can also add in any like wear spots or anything like that if we see that we need to add some more. And I would do that by uh, my charcoal pencil. So if I think that maybe right here might need a little bit um, more shading or maybe this pumpkin up here or wherever you think that it might need a little, we can, we can add that in as well. So maybe this might be more worn right here or even like on the door. This might have a little bit of wear here. Yeah, see that looks great. Maybe the white walls aren't white anymore. Um, so all of those little things really do make a difference. Okay, so I think that looks pretty fantastic. So I'm gonna get this dry and then we're gonna put our words on and we're done. Okay, so I want to use pumpkin patch for my for my words but I want it to curve I want it to do something a little bit different than just a straight line and so what I'm going to do is um, one of the things that I love doing is using tissue paper for well just about everything really I love using tissue paper so I am going to stencil out my letters and, I'm, and this is um, archival ink in jet black. And I'm just going to gently, one letter at a time, and then move it over so I have some space in between the next one. Okay, so you can see there, you can see I've got some of that letter in between. So let me show you, I've already done one. And this is what I've got. There's my, there's my letters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out, cut each letter out, and place them in my arch on my piece. And so I want to kind of get an idea. So I've got my charcoal pencil here. So this is about as good as it gets for me to measure. So right about there. And I want it to kind of go like that. That's a pretty good line. That's a good, that's a good gauge for how I want it to go. Now one of the reasons why I love using tissue paper this way is because if you, if it doesn't go the way it's supposed to go, you just take it up. You have not put anything down on your piece that you absolutely love, and um, you're, there's no fear, there's no risk. So I'm going to cut these up and start putting these down. Okay, so now that I, I've got my letters cut out here, and I laid them out, and when I laid them out, I did not like how it looked. So that's why I love using tissue paper. So now I'm going to grab my I'm using a smaller brush because um, I want a little. I want to have a little bit of finesse when I do this, 
And the key to getting great tissue paper that goes transparent is fluid matte medium and lots of it. Um, the more you have down, the better. The more transparent your tissue paper is going to be. And I have a lot of people say, my tissue paper didn't go, didn't get transparent. It's because you either did not have enough uh, medium down um, or you were using gel or something like that. It needs to be very fluid and lots of it. So I want to have a nice, I'm going to have lots of extra here, but I'm going to push it out here to the sides. And I'm going to start in the middle because P is the middle piece and I'm still going to follow this line for pumpkin, but I'm going to put patch straight across. And you want to lay it down and you don't want to fiddle with it too much because you risk tearing and you work from the inside out. And then I'll just put my letters on the sides here. And just let it sit in the tissue paper and make sure that you've got plenty of coverage all underneath your um, tissue paper otherwise it will not go transparent and then you'll gently and I say this emphatically gently come over the top of it with your brush so I got that one a little low hmm. Let's see if I can scooch it up just nope there's no moving it now See, I can move this one down a little bit to try and match that. That looks pretty good. Oop. The wetter it gets, the more fragile it becomes, so you have less time to work with it. Oh, I got my. That looks pretty good. It could be over just a little bit more. But we're going to go with it. And now I'm going to take and now I'm going to grab some of this extra and bring it down here to fill in this space here and I'll put my pumpkin patch and I will see PA so T is the middle. Start with the middle. making sure to have lots and lots of medium on there. P-A-T-C, I don't want to spell it wrong here. ATCH. And I like that I can make the le the letters turn a little bit or make them just inconsistent and not perfectly straight because that's that's the what I call the beauty of it. Cute. Now, at this point you don't want to go over your your um your letters because they will tear with your brush. So what I do is I take a paper towel and I gently lay it down and pick up that excess. Gently is the key. And I can come back over and pick that up just a tiny bit more. And then once it gets dry, that will become um, transparent. But once you start picking it up like that, then you have to just let it be, which is one of the hardest things for me to do. <laughs> 
because it starts to get tacky because it's starting to dry. But that is adorable. So I'm going to get this dry and then we're going to put our final shading around the edge and we're done. Alright, so this is done. Look at how great that looks. Nice and transparent. I'm going to add some shading around the edge. I'm using a soft pastel and um, that is different than an oil pastel. It is a chalk. And I shade around the edges. That is my style, my thing. Um, of course you don't have to do that. But to me it kind of finishes everything off. And then if you need to add any other highlights, soft pastels are a great way to do that. If you want to add just a few more highlights here, maybe a highlight here, something like that, you can definitely do that. Add some highlight there maybe. You can even add additional highlights or, or aging around the edges if you want to darken some of this up. You can def definitely do that. Um, there's just a ton of things that you can do. You can bring in any other color that you want. And the great thing again about soft pastels is that it, there's no fear. If you don't like it, it comes right up. So now, because we've worked with soft pastels and charcoal pencil, you need to fix your piece before you seal it. And I am looking, there it is. So I use Spectrafix, and I will just give it a quick spray. And when you do that, you'll notice that some of your um, chalk marks will kind of disappear, but they come back once it dries. This is um, all natural. It's low odor, low everything. It's perfect for using indoors. It is not as good as Krylon Workable Fixative, but I prefer this because of what it is. Um, sometimes when I am heavy on certain things like uh, charcoal and soft pastels, I will definitely use a workable fix Krylon's Workable Fixative, but you need to take it outside in a well-ventilated area. All right, my friends, that is it. Quick, fun, and hopefully informative. Um, just quick drop-in tutorial this uh, whenever you see this Friday. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed the project. If you did, subscribe, like, ask any questions that you might have, and I will do my best to get back to you. And I will see you soon.